God, be prepared for some horror to come when this chakra wants to test. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, now, so you uh, turn yourself into a pigeon. Now his assistant should turn himself into a pigeon. And I become a big parrot, yeah. You fly in front, I fly after. Mm. When we arrive at the palace, you fly into his lap, yeah, and uh, scream murder. Help, help, help. That uh, parrot want to eat me. Please help me. Please help me. Protect me. Save me. You know, like that. Skimming like that. Shimming or skimming? Shim? Skimming, okay. Shimming, is that German or it's my own Chinglish something? <laughs> the problem when you have so many languages, you know. <laughs> okay, that's it. And then after that, I will come in and ask for you. And if he doesn't give you, surely he won't, then I will ask for the compensation. See what he say. Okay? They scheme together, flew down. But the Tituima, the assistant, already told him, Your godly majesty, this Bodhisattva is a very compassionate and uh, you know, distinguished being. Actually, we should come and make offering to him. We should not make him suffer. Testing and all that. I would say the same. What kind of God is that? Worse than the assistant, huh? Yeah. Yeah, maybe he is the same, you know. I scold you sometimes, but my assistant never does. <laughs> yeah. So they are better than me, huh? For sure, huh? <laughs> no? Mm, no. I don't hear anything. What did you say? No. Uh huh. <laughs> Thank you. If you blame anything, blame your own karma, huh? <laughs> okay. But the Buddha has never blamed the chakra god or anyone who come and ask for his suffering because he knows that, you know, will help him to clean up whatever residues of karma and further pushing him toward Buddhahood. Yeah, these are helpers. Yeah. The same with Devadatta. He has never blamed him, he has never hated him. His cousin who always tried to harm him, life after life, but he has never blamed him. Yes. They are good and bad force, you see? Good police, bad police, yeah? <laughs> good guy, bad guy? Yeah, okay. And anything that tests our endurance is helping us to strengthen our spiritual endeavor, strengthen our faith in ourselves, yeah? make us more strong, more courageous to continue a difficult path of spiritual practice on this very difficult planet. Yeah? Hmm. But because it's difficult, so it's, it's quicker to, to attain higher level. In heaven, you have nothing to do. Nobody tests you. Just eat, sleep, so easy life, and then one day, boom, go back down again. <laughs> then feeling sorry, yeah. like this chakra god. But this is a natural of this god, you know, astral, astral beings, they are like that. You know, some of them are gentle, but many of them are warlike, okay? They often make war with the heaven, the second heaven. They are always fighting. So we cannot blame this planet if people make war with each other, you know? They fight up there, and then after they're born in here, continue fighting. Never stop, don't want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> and then the chakra god read a piece of poem like this to his assistant. I have no wicked heart. He uh, defend himself. <laughs> he probably feel a little ashamed in front of his assistant, you know? So he, he read a poem like this to him, say, I have no wicked heart. But if it's a real gold, we should burn it with fire to check out. I want to test the Bodhisattva if he is really sincere in his vow of uh, Buddhahood or not. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Who can stop you? 
you are the god, right? Buddha to be was still a human, you know, weak. I mean, powerless in in the world. He probably are respected everywhere in heaven, but in the world he's just a mortal, you know. How can he go against the god? Even as low level god was powerful, powerful, powerful. That's why I teach you to recite their names in respect, okay? So that they let you pass. Respect, okay? <laughs> you still have to respect the five gods when you pass by their kingdom. Hmm? Why else, you know? <laughs> Remember this, these stories, okay? <laughs> Don't think he's just an astral god, you know, I'm now a third level being. Master say I'm an Arahan, Arahan, whatever, and then look down upon him, then you see it. You see him come. <laughs> Don't give him any excuse, okay, to hurt you. If he does, call your master. Yeah, master, this guy is harassing me. <laughs> Help! <laughs> I've done nothing. I've done nothing. It's all him. <laughs> okay. After he read the poem to his assistant, then. Uh, of course, the assistant has to do what he asks, you know, so he can change himself into a pigeon. You know, the two pigeons, yeah? one of those that I fed yesterday? One of those. Maybe there's one of those is here, I don't know. <laughs> you watch it, don't be polite, impolite to them. We, we fed them on the backyard still, right, I hope? Yes. Okay, be, before I always did, but when I left, I don't know if they continue to the tradition. Feed them on the backyard, huh? Yes. Where, where the disciples don't keep coming and going, yeah. remind them. There are some people live there, tell them to feed them every day. Okay? Nutrition, food, yeah? some seed or something also, not, not just bread. When bread, then must be wholesome bread, whole meal, okay? So they have enough nutrition. And soft, yeah? Soft, easy to, to pick and make it small, small, easy for them to swallow. Because they're not used to it, using the hand to, to, to hold the bread, yeah? So just make very small so they can swallow immediately, so they don't choke, okay? Understand, huh? Mm. If you feed birds, you do that. Mm. Or just buy the proper food for pigeons or birds, okay? Wild birds and pigeons are sometimes different, a little different kind of seeds. Okay, so of course they flew together down to earth and did as plan, yeah? Plan A, yeah? They don't have plan B because God don't mess up, don't make mistakes. So only plan A. And then, uh, and then the, uh, of course the the pigeon, you know, which is the assistant of the God, flew right into his arms of the king. The king was sitting there, and then uh, screamed for help. Yeah, and then uh, the king, of course, holding him and say, "What's the matter? Don't worry, don't worry." and tell his assistant or guard to bring food and water for the pigeon to eat. And then the parrot, big one, big parrot. I didn't know parrot eat other birds, I didn't know that. They only eat grains, vegetarian. So probably this is a wrong, wrong interpretation or something. It's not Tim Tak, maybe it's the eagle or something. Huh? Maybe a hawk. A hawk, yeah, must be a hawk. You know? Cannot be parrot. Parrot, they don't eat other birds. I don't know that one. Probably a special parrot that I didn't know. But my parrots, they don't eat anything like that. Yeah. Okay. So maybe in the wild, I don't know. Or is it just a story, you know? He just makes sure that it happened like that. Because parrots are better looking than hawk, you know? So maybe he doesn't want to appear so ugly. <laughs> First impression counts, you know? So he, he appears as a parrot, because parrots are colorful, mm-hmm. beautiful, beautiful, all of them. Even blue are really shining blue, you know. Or red are really scarlet red. Yellow is all, you know, sunshine-like yellow. They are not just normal colors, so beautiful. Mm? Mm. Okay. But the, the parrots from heaven are really different. They're glowing with light. I told you already, uh, the two witnesses are not here, but one of them is a Korean nun. He probably comes soon, sometime. And she's one of the witnesses, one of the two witnesses. I was making 
um, baking some cakes, and I invited both of them. They were my assistant at that time, temporary. I invited them to the front yard, you know, to eat some cake and uh, make some tea for three of us. And then these parrots, no, they look like pigeons, but they are color of the parrot and the color of unearthly parrot. Glowing green, glowing blue, glowing yellow, glowing shocking pink. I never seen a, a pigeon with a shocking pin and glowing like that. All kind of rainbow color. Each one have one particular color only, not a mixed color like parrot, but their color is so beautiful like parrot. And they run in and talking and singing on top of the pine tree in front of my house. Originally, I was thinking they are pigeons, because they are small size and exactly look like pigeons. But when I look at them, no, they are not pigeons. And they fly around me, you know, circling, showing off their color. Then I say, you are not pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they came to congratulate me for some higher level or something like that, a new blessing, yeah. So I gave them some bread and some something to eat. Then when I want to bring water, they they gone, yeah. And I asked my assistant, did you see them fly in which direction? No, we didn't know, they just disappear. we didn't see them. We, see, we didn't see them gone, yeah. And that's only four level beings. Imagine higher than that, huh? Okay, okay, uh, oh, boop, boop. okay, come down, of course. The, oh, we don't say parrot. I don't like to give parrots bad name. They're not bad. They eat earth sometimes when they're hungry, but they don't eat other beings. Okay? Maybe they... I don't know, but the other parrots that I know, even in the shop, they don't give them any meat. In the shop, when they sell parrots, they don't give them meat, so that means they never eat it. If they eat meat, they would have given them to make them, you know, accordingly, you know? Yeah didn't. Hmm. So we call them a uh, hawk, is better, huh? Oh, so this hawk flew after him and land on top of one of the beams in, in the palace and called out and say, Your Majesty, return me my food, <laughs> my, my lunch. <laughs> no, he say, return me that pigeon, yeah? And then the king asked, what for I should return him to you? Because you are holding my lunch, he said. Okay. I am very hungry now. Return him to me so I can eat. So the king say, I vow to save all beings. He came to take refuge in me. I would never give him to you. So the the hawk <laughs> the hawk say, Majesty. You said you want to save all beings from suffering. I am suffering from hunger now. <laughs> I'm suffering from hunger now. How don't you, how, why don't you care about me? Return, return that. Return the pigeon, or I will die from hunger right in front of you right now. And then how you answer yourself about your loving, kindness, compassion, etc. It's all lip service. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, if you're hungry, could you eat some other food? He said, yes, I can. I can eat other kind of meat, but it has to be freshly cut. Otherwise, I cannot take it. Yeah, you know already, this God. And the king was thinking to himself, ah, if I have to kill another animal right now to give it to him, then it is no, no sense, right? If I kill one to give to another one, then it is no sense. So is it better I cut my own flesh to give it to him? Then it would be, you know, logical. And then he took a knife and cut one, of, uh, one piece of flesh from his thigh to give it to the, the hawk. And he said, here, here is uh, my uh, flesh, it's very, very fresh, uh, please eat it and uh, leave, leave the pigeon be, you know, let him be alive, save his life. Uh, and the, the hawk, Chakra, said, Your Majesty, you are a great king 
and everyone know you as a great charitable person. Even you, so you have to have the fair eyes to judge things in this world. You look down upon me, you think I'm just a small bird, so you give me just a small piece of meat. If, to be fair, the meat has to be equally as heavy as the pigeon. Yeah, you know already, but we continue or not. This guy is so cruel. <laughs> I wish any of you never have to meet him. <laughs> he could stay wherever he stay. Don't come here. <laughs> All right. So the king thing, oh, yeah, yeah, it's logical, of course. So he asked his people, his worker, to bring out a scale. So he put the meat on and the pigeon on one side. And the pigeon is pigeon's eye sinking down, I mean the pigeon too heavy for the meat. So he cut another piece of meat, put on, it still doesn't equalize. And continue cutting, cutting, and bigger scale, still nothing happened. Yeah, no, he used magical power to do that, just to torture somebody. I don't understand this God. You see, this is a problem. This is a problem. When anyone practices spiritual just to gain heavenly merit, to become a king of heaven of some kind, lower king or higher king, or become even maya, understand, powerful and very dignified, you know, high position, have a lot of magical power, whatever they want, they can have, but has no love. This is a difference between maya or the heavenly king and the Buddha, you know, an enlightened saint. Because enlightened saints, their concepts different. They started out to help others. They elevate other beings. They do anything they can to help them. But these gods, they earn only heavenly merit, or maybe even earthly merit, they become king and all that, but warlike, has no love, no compassion. Even though it is just an appearance, a uh, magical power, you see, to make the king cut his flesh, but it still hurt. You know, only the chakra God knows it is an appearance, it's not real. But the king has real flesh, real blood. It's not an illusion to the king, he's not enlightened, he's not in heaven. So the flesh cut is bleeding and hurt. So he keeps cutting, cutting, cutting until he has no more. And he collapsed. And then, and then he tried very hard to stand up, to put his whole body on the scale. But then he was it's so painful, you know? He collapsed, truly collapsed. This time he has, he has no more consciousness of anything else. Many long, long hours. Uh, they, they say year low, I don't know, maybe for a while. Eh? Then he wake up. A long time after that, he wake up. Even then, the chakra didn't even relent. The king already collapsed on the floor and already unconscious. Still, he did not relent. He did not say, OK, now I know his heart already is sincere. And then, you know, help him. No, still standing there and watch. And then, but then after he, the king wake up from his coma, he thought again. He thought to himself, and the, the king by himself, just in the thought, he said, I myself, mean the king, I myself, remember life after life, thinking that life after life, because I have this body, therefore I suffer a lot of different kind of pain in these uh, three worlds, yeah? Uh, the meaning the human, the animals, and the hell, yeah? This is the three suffering world. Mm. And also being born in different kind of levels of consciousness, even animals, yeah? Even lower and higher because of being so attached to life, to this kind of physical life and uh, taking care too much of this body 
clinging to it too much. And then always giving it nutrition, you know, protecting it, uh, loving it, meaning the body, yes. And then also because of, of it, because of this body, even go further to harm other beings, to protect it. And then, even then, one day, this body will be also nothing, gone. And then it becomes like earth dirt again, yeah. And all this time, I mean all this lifetime, he has never discarded this body in order to help anyone. He was thinking like that, some of the past lives, not the lives that he sacrificed, but probably the lives that he did not sacrifice, like in an ignorant state of being. Maybe he did not remember, maybe he did always sacrifice. But in this state, because he's a mortal again, he has no uh, memories of the past. Yeah. Some people have this capacity, but the king at that time, he was just a normal practitioner, a mortal. He's just sincere and loving and kind, but he has not probably uh, got the Guaning method, the, the light and sound, to, for ultimate liberation. Thank you. 